let's talk about something that we all experience once in a while. Waiting. That wasn't nice, right? I was just looking at my watch. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know how long it would take. But we see this happening in Shiny apps all the time. While we do our best to code as efficient as possible and make our app as fast as we can, it's not always possible to completely eliminate waiting. But don't worry, there's something that we can do. Instead of trying uh, to focus on reducing the waiting time, we can make sure that the waiting experience is better. This way, we can decrease the perceived waiting time while the actual waiting time stays the same. In this video, you'll learn more about how to do that in Shiny. First, let's back up the statements with some facts. An extensive literature study has shown that there are many factors that determine the perceived waiting time and the overall waiting experience. There are many factors that were identified, but we're going to focus on three of them today. One, provide distraction. Two, give an explanation. And three, avoiding uncertainty. This means that every solution can earn three points. Let's see which solution does best. Let's take a look at the first solution. Often in our Shiny app, we will have an action button that will trigger a lengthy computation and will then show some output afterwards. We can use this action button to inform the user about that something is happening to begin with and what we're actually doing. So let's take a look at this example. Uh, we have an app with an action button that says, click me. If I click on that, we will see that the label changes and there's also a spinning icon appearing. So how do we do that? We have this action button here, which originally says the label is click me and the icon is a uh, rocket, a font awesome icon. What we can do if the button is being clicked, we can update the action button so that it shows another new label, namely I'm calculating stuff, um, and it will show another icon. The icon is the sync icon, and to actually make it spin, we're making use of the font awesome spin class. What we also did is we are disabling the button when somebody has clicked it. This means that the user can't click it twice. This is handy if you're working with impatient users. This is a very simple but effective solution to show the user that something is happening and uh, that they actually have to wait a bit before the results are being processed. I would say this is a two out of three because we are informing the user that something is happening by our message and we're providing a little bit of entertainment by showing a spinning icon. A second option is to put a spinner on the output that we're actually waiting for. For example, a graph or a table. We can use the Shiny CSS Loaders package for that. By simply using the function with spinner, we can add a spinner on top of the output that we want. So let's see how that works. If we click this button here, then a spinner is being shown with a nice message. This function gives you a couple of options, like providing the type of spinner that you want, the color that you want it to be in, and uh, you can provide a caption, which can then show a message. Another very simple but effective solution, and another two out of three points, because we are providing the user with information and the spinning uh, is a bit of entertainment. Another very similar solution can be found in another package, namely the waiter package. The waiter package has a very convenient function called autoWaiter, and this function you have to add only once in the UI, and it will know for every element on the page that a, a spinner has to be shown whenever this output is rendering or recalculating. Super convenient, and uh, autoWaiter allows you to provide a custom HTML, meaning that you can put everything in it that you basically like. It can be your company logo spinning around, or it can be a nice image, um, whatever you want. In this case, let me show you, we are using a spinning flower uh, with a message. So we're using the spin flowers function that also comes from the waiter package. And then we are providing a simple paragraph with some text, namely a uh, loading plot. We give it once in the UI, uh, so not on a specific element like we did in uh, the second example. Um, so this is a very 
easy fix for, uh, yeah, for your waiting experience. I would say this solution is another two out of three points just because we are providing the user with some information and the spinning flowers, well, come on, they provide some entertainment. In the previous examples, we mainly looked at waiting experience while we were in the app. So we were clicking buttons, we were waiting for computations, we were waiting for graphs to appear. But a lot of the time for Shiny apps, um, it also takes a long time to actually load the Shiny app on the page. So we have to think about the experience before the app actually loads. And that's also uh, called the preloading experience. Now, one of the best examples that can be found of preloading experience, if you ask me, is uh, The Sims. If you played it just like me every day when you got out of school, you were confronted with uh, the time that was needed to load the game. But it wasn't that bad because uh, the loading experience of The Sims uh, came with a nice sound that got stuck in your head for the whole day. It came with images, it came with some weird and funny messages, and it was just a good preloading experience which actually decreased the perceived waiting time. And that's exactly what we're after. So in the next example, we're going to try to copy this behavior and we're going to use the waiter package uh, for that. Uh, in which we will show uh, some of these funny messages as well. The waiter package has a function called waiter show on load and it will show a full screen loader whenever the app uh, is being loaded. So let's first see what it looks like. Uh, if I click reload app here, then we see this, this spinning flower again with a message um, which is being shown before the app is actually loaded. So it works with this HTML. We can provide a custom HTML here. And um, as I said, in the Sims, always a different message was being shown. And we can simulate this behavior by a simple sample function. We have predefined messages in here. And every time the app loads, we simply pick one to display. The waiter show on load function gets accompanied by the waiter hide function, which you can call at any time uh, in the server part. I would say this is a 1.5 out of three, and let me explain you why. It gets one full point because it is very entertaining. Um, I really do like these messages, and uh, as I said, I like the spinning flower. But um, to be fair, we're not really explaining to the user on why they have to wait, and um, we're also not giving them any certainty about how long it's going to take. So just a mere 1.5 out of three but I'm sure we can do much better. So how do we get that 1.5 to a two or even a three? So the things that we were mainly missing in the previous solution was that we didn't provide the user with enough information. We also didn't give them any perspective. We didn't tell them how long it was going to take to load the app. Luckily, Waiter has another gem called Hostess. Hostess comes with a function called Hostess Loader, and the Hostess Loader can help you uh, with showing a um, loader that counts from 0 to 100, for example. Let's see what it looks like. If the app is loaded now, we see a fan appearing that goes from 0 to 100% with a nice message. The fan comes from a preset that we've chosen, and um, we can set some additional options like the text color, um, the class that we want to apply, and uh, if we want to have it on the center, um, yes or no. So this option is much better because it gives the user some perspective. We know how long it's going to take because we know 100 is uh, the end. And um, we also improved our messages a little bit. So as you can see, I improved the messages here to say actually why users are waiting and what they can expect when the loading is finished. So we're saying things here like, hey, we're loading the app, or um, app is loading, we're preparing the app for you. But we still combine it with a nice and funny message uh, because we want to provide some entertainment. So I would definitely say this option is now a three out of three because um, one, we are providing entertainment. I mean, the messages are still fun. Two, we are informing the users because we're telling them, hey, the app is loading, we're doing this and that, so just hold on. Um, after this is finished, you can uh, see the app. And three, 
we are avoiding uncertainty because we're giving the user some perspective on how long it's going to take before the app is finished. So this is a winner. So in this video, I provided a couple of options, um, but obviously there's much more out there. There are two uh, other things that I want to highlight. Uh, one is another gem from Waiter. And yes, the Waiter package has many gems. Um, one of them is Attendant. And Attendant is uh, some kind of a progress bar, which also goes from zero to 100. And uh, this is great because um, you can avoid uncertainty this way and you can show the user how long it's going to take for that something is actually finished. And another thing I want to highlight is the Shiny Busy package. The Shiny Busy package has some nice features as well to put spinners on grass, for example. And you can also do some really entertaining stuff like this cool banana. I mean, come on, that's entertaining. If you want to try out any of the examples from the video, I have created a GitHub page um, and the URL you can find in the description. Sometimes a little bit of waiting is just unavoidable. A Shiny app does need to load and sometimes we do want to do some heavy and lengthy computations. But you learned now how to reduce the perceived waiting time and make waiting a more pleasant experience. Just keep in mind that you need three things. Entertainment, information, certainty. Happy programming.